Tonight, we're going to tell you one of those only in America stories, but this one begins and ends on the other side of the Atlantic. Rocco Camiso was 12 years old when his family moved to the United States from Southern Italy. With the hustle he learned on the streets of the Bronx and exceptional timing, Camiso built a cable TV empire and a net worth of $8 billion. So what did he do with his made in the USA fortune? Rocco Camiso returned to the land of his birth, and as we reported in March, he bought a pro soccer team. The story will continue in a moment. You've described yourself as a hustler. What does that mean? Well, always in the good sense of a hustler, um, because it could have a terrible sense, right? A hustler has never, you know, always try to find a way to achieve a certain objective. Hustle, hustle. Don't give up. Don't take no for an answer. I've heard that you have no tolerance for people you call spinners. Right. What's a spinner? Spinner is the, a bullshit artist. I know plenty of those guys. I have a pretty good idea who the hell I'm dealing with. Did you learn that in the Bronx? No, my mother gave it to me when I was born. <laughs> <laughs> Rocco Camiso doesn't suffer fools. But like most Italian soccer fans, he does suffer. Four years ago, he bought the team in Florence, where game day is filled with more agony and ecstasy than a Puccini opera. We watched as the city's die-hard fans, called the Tifosi, endured a collective 90-minute long breakdown. I don't speak Italian, but I think I know what they're saying. <laughs> Camiso, who is 73, knows the Tifosi follow his reactions. So he tries to keep a poker face as he chews wads of nicotine gum. How many of these do you go through? Oh, a know. game. Yeah. 15, 20. <laughs> 15, 20. Depends on the game, right? Yeah. When Camiso bought Fiorentina, it ticked two boxes. First, the $170 million price was a bargain for a European club. Second, it met the demand by his wife that if he insisted on buying a team, it had to be someplace nice. When I landed in Florence, outside the airport, there were a mass of people there. And the first words that I used, chiamatemi Rocco, call me Rocco. Because over here, titles are very important. And says, I don't need titles. You don't have to call me mister. Just call me Rock. And today, they call me Rock. Fiorentina, which is nicknamed La Viola, or the Purple, has not won a league championship since 1969. The Tifosi got sick of waiting and ran the previous owner out of town. The Tifo, the fans, first they're everything. But they, they could be nasty if you don't win. The highs are high and the lows are low, it right. seems like. But they can't kick Rocco out of here, you know. They think they, they're going to criticize him and kick me out. They, no, that can't happen. <laughs> Rocco's a little different. How are you different? First of all, there's not been anyone here that's put in the money that I put in in a short period of time. And I go back to the Medici from 500 years ago. If I lose 500 million, 400 million, I'm not going to go and wash the dishes again the way I did when I was a young man. So <laughs> watch out what you do because you don't know what's going to come next. Rocco Camisa's journey to the owner's box in Florence began here by the subway in the Bronx. His father, a carpenter, and his older brother came to the U.S. in the 50s to escape poverty. A few years later, they sent for Rocco, his mother, and two sisters. When we came here in 63, my brother bought the house. God bless him. And this was like a luxury to us. And we lived upstairs on the second floor. Camiso's English was terrible, but he played a mean accordion. So at age 13, he cut his first deal. Rocco agreed to perform for free at a Bronx theater if the manager helped get him into the Catholic All Boys High School, Mount St. Michael Academy. It is still a launching pad for young men from immigrant families. 
even though I had not taken the test to get in, I asked the manager to please send a recommendation letter. He did, and they admitted me. So you never took the test, but did you have to play the accordion? They didn't let me play the accordion because the band did not, did not have the accordion. <laughs> okay. But just on your accordion skills alone, you were given entrance? I got lucky yeah. or hustled, whichever way you want to call it. He kept hustling. Every day before and after school, he worked at his family's luncheonette near the subway station to pay his high school tuition. So I used to get paid $1 an hour. And through that $1 an hour, I paid uh, four years of Mount St. Michael uh, schooling. Now, it didn't cost a lot of money then, but it was still something. Camiso wanted to be an engineer, but a dollar an hour wasn't going to pay for college. So Camiso hunted down a scholarship for a sport he always loved, soccer. Never mind that his high school didn't have a team and he'd not played much since coming to America. And somehow you end up with a soccer scholarship to Columbia. How does that happen? Hustle. I needed money to go to school. So I asked the gym teacher to go and call the NYU coach. The NYU coach puts me in the American Czechoslovak team in the uh, German-American League. Mm -hmm sees me play six games, says, yeah, I like the kid, so let me help him get into NYU, which he did, and they gave me 50% scholarship, but that was not enough. So I then told the gym teacher, go and call the coach at Columbia now. In the space of three to four weeks, they give me admissions to Columbia and a full scholarship. Had they seen you play? No. I asked that question after they admitted me. I said... But let me ask you, you give me all this money and you don't want to see me play? Says Rocco, if you're good enough for NYU, you're good enough for Columbia. Camiso became team captain and led Columbia to its first NCAA tournament. After graduation and an MBA, he made his way to Wall Street. At night, though, he was helping his brother run a disco. Rival clubs played the Bee Gees, but not Camiso. He chose to play pop music from Italy. I was really into Italian music and um, came up with this idea that by specializing in something as opposed to being just like anybody else, you know, we could do well. And nobody could touch us in terms of the competition because nobody had it. Camiso became an executive in the cable TV industry just as it exploded. Then in 1995, he decided it was time to start a business he named Mediacom. Like the disco, he designed a plan to seize an opportunity others had missed. It was an eight-page paper that talked about what I foresee in terms of the cable business. What did you foresee? And what I foresaw is the fact that sooner or later we're going to get deregulated and there's a great opportunity to do well in the smaller markets of the U.S., the rural markets, largely because nobody wanted them. Rocco Camiso believed those small markets hid buried treasure, 600,000 miles of cable used to carry computer data through places such as the Corn Belt and Deep South. He risked his life savings to buy up the small systems. Again, timing and luck were on his side. Today, Mediacom provides broadband in 22 states, and Rocco Camiso's net worth is $8 billion. It's a private company. Catherine Camiso, Rocco's wife of 47 years, works there. So does his sister, Italia, and his son, Joe, on the left. Outside Mediacom headquarters in upstate New York is a bocce court. Inside, espresso flows. Camiso told us he had a streak of 25 years of profits and has never laid off workers. I have heard so many people say, it's not personal, it's business. That's crap. You know, I think the personal, frankly, has a lot to do with why companies fail or succeed. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, there's no one like me in our business. And I'm talking about the media, newspapers. But I hate to destroy people's lives because I have to go in and make an extra million dollars. Camiso made a point to us that he does not own a yacht, a mansion on the beach, or a private jet. Of course, we had to point out he did buy an Italian soccer team. When I came here, I used three things. Fast, 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 that the coast will be okay, you know, within my means. And control, control, control. I control or no money from Rock. That's, that's the way it works. 
What's harder, running a company like Mediacom or running this a soccer team? This is significantly more difficult. I get more criticism here <laughs> than in 1,500 communities in the U.S. Forza grande, Fiorentina. The American owner is under relentless scrutiny by Fiorentina fans who demand that he shells out whatever it costs to bring in stars and end their 50-year championship drought. Then there's been times when he's lost it with the unforgiving Italian press. Have you ever thought, what have I done? What did I get myself into? No. It's a lot of activation. That, but that's not me. No, I made the decision. I'm going to stick with the decision. True to Rocco's way, he's playing the long game by spending $100 million on this. It's called Viola Park. The Camiso showed us around what will be one of the largest soccer facilities in Europe for developing young male and female players. But this is Italy. You see that opening there where you have the two Vs? Yes. Right in the middle? We had to break the building apart because there's a Roman wall there, rocks. Stop it. You hit a Roman wall? Yeah, oh. so we had to uncover it, cover it up, but break the building. We could not build on top of the Roman wall. Despite the agita and a so-so season, Rocco Comiso still seems to love this business. He's become one of the most famous Americans in Italy and adores his players, some who look like Michelangelo himself may have carved them out of marble. My job is to hug them, kiss them, put my arms around them, and hope that they do better the next time. No tough talk? You know, they get the message indirectly. You know, that things got to change here. How do they get the message? Uh, you know, they get the message. Never mind. <laughs> and if you're wondering if Camiso still plays a mean accordion, here's your answer. Our visit to Florence ended with dinner and a serenade by the billionaire from the Bronx. Do you think if you had stayed in Italy, you'd have been able to achieve the success that you have no, today? I, no way. This is truly the land of opportunity. He gave this poor soul, okay, yeah, the opportunity to become something, somebody, and that's the beauty about America. You still believe in the American dream? Absolutely, yeah. There's the last hope in the world. But my mom provided me a phenomenal education. Rocco Camiso has given millions to his alma maters and has contributed to scholarships for nearly 3,000 students across the U.S., including many first-generation immigrants like him. I just want to be known as the guy that uh, nothing, success, never changed him. Just Rocco? Just Rocco. More on tonight's stories, including... How similar is the movie to actual Top Gun? <laughs> Top Gun graduates compare the movie to the real thing at 60minutesovertime.com.